Howdy, I'm Dusty and I farm near Stratford, South Dakota. We have a beef feedlot and we also do corn and beans in the field. I went to Agritechnica in Hanover, Germany just this last November. This will be my story on what I saw. If you're going yourself, I have some useful tips at the very end of this video. From my understanding, this is the largest egg show in the world. The expedition grounds were massive with over 20 buildings in the complex. In my two days, I didn't even have enough time to see all the exhibits. Although, I gotta admit, after two days, I really didn't care to see any more. Accompanying me was my wife, Brittany, and son, Clay. Understandably, the hotels were absolutely booked, even three months before we flew over. So, we were forced to stay in somebody's upstairs bedroom through the website Airbnb. Although, we absolutely loved it. This allowed us an opportunity to hang out with the local family who also happened to have a little boy around Clay's age, so they got to play and have a lot of fun. We also got a chance to hang out with other guests that were also staying at this Airbnb house. These guests were also there for the big egg show. I was told before I went that I would see some pretty crazy displays and that the companies really have to show off if they hope to stand out apart from the crowd. The company's marketing budgets for these shows must be enormous. No, that's not a poster behind that tractor, but a beautiful, huge video display. I would have absolutely loved to hook my Xbox up to that wall. The show is so ridiculous that the companies build buildings inside of the convention center buildings. A little secret for you. When the show closes around 8, nobody actually kicks you out. And that's because the companies will throw parties at night. They'll have their own bars built into their displays. Now, one night, since our family was having trouble adjusting from the time zone change, we couldn't get to sleep at night and were wandering around the house after midnight. Then lo and behold, one of the other guests staying at our house, a German, came wandering into the house all amped up. Turns out the company that sells axles for trucks, well, at their bar after the show, they hired a DJ and threw a big party. Only a few of these vendors were able to fit in this enormous building. And there are over 20 of these buildings at the show. The big boys like Kloss really brought out all the inventory and they had the trucks waxed down beautifully and the wheels were really shiny. This looks a little bit similar to the yellow tractors we have over here. I was told to look out for a company named Ropa. They make stuff for sugar beets. These machines are the largest and most outrageous things I saw at the show. The photos definitely don't do them justice. Just look at the people in contrast to the tires and the equipment. I think this octopus machine eats up piles of sugar beets and spits them into trucks. That cab, header, and those three legs in the back of the picture, they all belong to the same behemoth of a machine. Here's another angle of the same machine. These things are just outrageous. It was nice to see something a little familiar, and this drew quite a crowd. It must be a little exotic to the Germans because I didn't see any big four wheel drives made by any European companies. Ah, our old friend Bolaris. Dad tells me stories of when these were imported to the United States after the fall of communism. You know, they really never took off around us. Though the displays for these startup guys were nothing special, they were my favorite exhibits. You know, apart from agriculture, I'm excited about the startup thing going on in Silicon Valley. The Valley is disrupting old industries and giving us products that we didn't even think we needed or even could exist just 10 years ago. So what about agriculture? Does all the innovation have to come from huge companies like Trimble and John Deere? Yes, these companies do great with work with technology, but sometimes it seems like my Android phone and a few free apps are nearly as powerful as that crazy expensive auto guidance system for my tractor that seems to crash more often than it should. Here are some companies that I hope will change the sector of agriculture, or at least send a wake up call to the big guys to keep on innovating. A startup in a tiny booth. This Solvi company, 
takes photography made from drones and does field analysis, like NDVI, counts plants and creates prescriptions. The company only consists of two people and are less than a year old. They're taking on companies far bigger than them. Of all the stuff I saw at the show, this is one of the companies I'm willing to try out. Perpetual Mobile is another one of these startup companies. They're only about five years old and have 10 employees, and they're coming up with ways to automate parts of the farm using robots. This Asian manufacturer produces a drone that can haul dry or liquid product out to a field. This company makes controllers that can automate where machines go. They mount one on this toy and we had fun watching my boy chase it around. To add to the nuttiness of the show, while I was looking at stuff, I heard a crowd cheering and announcer doing a play-by-play. -play. It turned out to be a big video game competition. They were playing Farm Simulator and finding out who's the best at virtual farming. There were two buildings alone devoted to just components. These are filled with the mundane, such as electrical connectors, hydraulic valves, and sensors. They were not interested in selling to farmers like me, but to large manufacturers like Agco. This is where I realized that this show is as much or more for engineers and manufacturers as it is for farmers. In fact, I was the only farmer staying at our Airbnb house. The other three were engineers. So being an American from the Corn Belt, I saw a lot of equipment and farming techniques that were very foreign to me. Here's a couple of things I happened to snap a photo of. They sometimes use their tractors like trucks. This equipment is connected to the tractor, much like the fifth wheel on a semi. And they sometimes use their semis like tractors. This is designed to be used in the field and out in the forest. It can easily attach to equipment used on tractors and it has all the hydraulics already built in. I thought these were pretty slick and I wish that we had some options like this back home. I find this concept very interesting. They can haul silage and manure to and from the field very quickly yet don't cause the compaction or get stuck as often as our road semis do. This show primarily dealt with farming. Feed wagons were about the only livestock equipment I saw. Being a beef feedlot guy, I got pretty excited over this, and a number of brands made self-loading and self-propelled feed wagons. They don't import much to America, though. They seemed a little intriguing. With this outfit, there is no need to get out of the cab to run the payloader. The problem I see is if one component breaks down somewhere, the whole machine is out of commission. Whereas at our feedlot operation, if the feed wagon breaks down, we have a cheap old small one that we can hook up to. Or if the payloader breaks down, we can switch to our loader tractor in a pinch. Look here, they even had a virtual reality booth to test out driving one of these feed wagons. And yes, of course I tried it. And here are some more differences I found between home and the rest of the world. These things I find a little bit more odd than the previous photos. A lot of equipment had ridiculously huge tires. And also, so much of the equipment was insanely tall. I imagine our truck mounted manure spreader hauls just as much as this machine does, but unlike this one, our one at home doesn't require a telehandler to load it. And what is this thing? Just pause the video for a moment and endure what this machine is. From what I can tell, it's emulating a Polaris Ranger, but on the cheap. It appears that they took my garden tiller and welded it to a big wheelbarrow. Just look at that luxurious seat. You know, I live in corn and bean country. Coming to this show just continues to open my eyes as to how diverse agriculture is. These machines are used for high value vegetable crop planting. Yes, a guy sits on this machine and individually inserts each potted plant into the planter. Very labor intensive. So I made this video partially to encourage you to travel to this event. Although I won't be buying really many or any of the products that I see, the show opened my eyes to the many kinds of agriculture. It helps me get out of the rut of thinking that I have to do things the way my father and my grandfather always have. The other reason to go to the show is obviously because it's very fun. So, just a warning, they do not do this show every single year. It's every other year. So don't buy plane tickets until 2019. Another thing, we tried to buy hotel rooms three months out from the event and there was almost nothing available. And what was available was outrageously priced. So here's a hint, 
Stay in another town, maybe take a train to the show, or better yet, Airbnb is an awesome way to get closer to the culture. Now, another option for you is you don't have to directly fly in and out of Hanover. You can get plane tickets to different cities and use public transit to get around. For example, we flew into Berlin, played a couple of days, took the train to Hanover, and after the show, we rented a car and flew out of Munich after seeing the sights. There are rental places right by the expo. So if you rent a car ahead of time, you should be able to pick it up or drop it off and walk right to the show. I don't speak German, so some of the public transit signs didn't make sense to me, so I'll give you a hint on these. Um, the DB Bahn, that's a big train system designed to go from city to city. S-Bahn, every town pretty much has an S-Bahn. That's above the surface trains to get around the town. And U-Bahn, that's basically the subway or the metro. They're all connected to each other, and the ticketing system can be a little complicated, but with a little practice, you can figure it out. The last thing is preview days are more than double the price. These preview days are the first two days of the event. But if you're going to fly all the way there, I do recommend you spend the extra money because you won't have as many people to fight over to get around and look at the things. Oh yeah, ever since I was in grade school, I had heard that Lamborghini, yes, the Lamborghini, made tractors. I think they're separate companies now, but I still always wanted to see one. My boy and I finally got our chance to sit in one. So, is this fast and lu as luxurious as the more well-known supercar? Well, I actually thought the interior of these was one of the most plain of all the tractors I sat in. I'll see you in Hanover when the calendar hits November 2019.